Muslims all over the world celebrated Maulid and Nabi, the birth of the Prophet Muhammad. It's uh, a big celebration. You wouldn't have known about it from our papers, but uh, there's always articles in there about the threat of Isla Islamist extremism. Uh, do we misunderstand Islam? Mm. Miriam Francois Seurat, do we misunderstand? Well, I mean, Islam? clearly, I think that we do misunderstand Islam. Um, as a convert to the faith, I somewhat sympathise with a lot of the misconceptions that, that do abound, just because prior to my own investigation of the faith, I had quite a lot of negative perceptions myself. And it really does take some effort to get past sort of what's widely held to be truths about the faith to really understanding it. So um, I find that the misconceptions can vary from what I'd call the, the relatively innocuous, uh, not realizing that Allah is just the Arabic word for God and not um, uh, the idea that m Muslims somehow worship some sort of moon god, uh, to, uh, you know, the sometimes sympathetic stroke, uh, slightly patronizing assumption that all Muslim women need uh, liberation uh, from Western feminists or even Western armies, uh, through to, uh, unfortunately, things like 51% of uh, Britain's polled thinking that Islam is responsible for, um, you know, the July 7th bombings. Yeah. Um, so that there's kind of a huge range of misconceptions in the broader we, we as a society, and then within the Muslim community there are a whole set of uh, misconceptions. And, I think and dangerous interpretations. There are, so, there the, are is, fringe is, is, movements. It's part, it's part of the problem. It is the, you know, unlike the Bible, it is believed to be absolutely the received word of God to the, to the prophet Muhammad. And, so, and, and some of the verses seem to outsiders, perhaps, to be pretty uh, unambiguous. A, you mentioned women there. Yeah. A, I mean, if I can just read out a couple on, on, on women. Uh, Surah 2, 223. Your wives are your field. Go in, therefore, to your field as you will. Uh, and Surah 438. Uh, Men are in charge of women because Allah hath made the one of them to excel the other. Now, I, I don't, uh, so obviously you're reading a translation there, and the second translation... The Rodwell translation. Yeah, no, I, I certainly wouldn't agree with the way that the second uh, passage has been translated. Not, I don't find the first one hugely problematic, but certainly the second one... How would one, you translate it? Because there are well, the second, one, the second one is men have to provide for women. That's, that's uh, in, according to Islamic law, mm -hmm. that men have to provide financially for women. They are the breadwinners in the family. Uh, and so that's, that's the basic agreement. There are basic premises. Now, within the basic premises, there can be variations on that. But that's, that's the basic premise in the family is that uh, the husband is providing. Um, but, but when I say sort of patronizing, it is assumptions that sort of, you know, women, women in headscarves, you know, I often get asked the question, um, you know, does your husband make you wear that? Uh, you know, th there's never the idea that maybe Muslim women choose to make these decisions mm. for themselves. Uh, and, and certainly there isn't the understanding, uh, like Sarah Joseph, the editor of ML Magazine, recently wrote that for her, coming from the modeling agency, putting on the headscarf was her equivalent of what burning bras and shaving heads was to previous generations of it's feminists. The headscarf, is we've discussed it before, no doubt we'll discuss no it. No doubt. Again, but the general situation of uh, Islam being misunderstood. Shiva, you were a political prisoner in Iran, weren't you, for three and a half years. Uh, is it down to the religion or is it not down to the regime, some of the attitudes that you encounter? Well, I think it's down to the religion when it comes to the power. I don't know why should I be agree with your interpretation because everyone can have their own interpretation. Sure. I don't think we misunderstood Islam. I, I think people who are against Islamic rule, they know because it, it brings inequality, especially when it comes to women's rights and children's rights. And also it cannot tolerate any other people who does not believe in religion. Well, and in the other hand, and, sorry, let yeah. me finish. And in the other hand, basically people who are for Islamic laws, they know what they're doing. They're not extremists. I mean, when there is a difference between individuals believing my parents are Muslim, they believe in Islamic Islam, but they're not for Islamic rules on the power. When Islam comes the pa under power, that's what happened. They issue <coughs> fatwa. Look at Iran's and Afghanistan situation. Lots of examples that you can see there that actually when Islam meets there. I, haven't, I have read Quran. My parents are Muslim. I was proud of them. I know what it feels like to live under the Islamic laws. I've been in prison for the same reason. What was it like for you as reason. a woman then? Well, as a woman, and I how mean, how do they I was... justify it Quranically? Well, 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 despite what people think, Iran is not an Islamic country in a way. Many of them are Muslim, but they're not for Islamic laws. As a woman there, I was very young that I was kicked out of the school just because I wasn't wearing the hijab as they wanted me. It's not just that one. You see your parent, your mom, 
deprived from getting divorced because they don't get the custody of their children. I haven't seen my mom for 10 years. You know why? Because the government, according to Islamic law, the wife has to have the permission of the husband to get out of the, well, the country. This is, the, but this is, this is where differences of opinion come in. And the, well, this the, is the problem, uh, isn't no, it? The, the, well, no, we, we have to be clear here. There is variation within the Muslim community, and yeah. there are more extreme interpretations of Islamic law. And I condemn anybody who forces you to wear a headscarf, just as I condemn anyone who forces me to remove it. Where, where, so you, cannot, say you cannot assume that everybody holds the Iranian interpretation of Islamic law. It's just not true. Can I say something? There is a difference between between yeah. you living in Britain chose to wear hijab of and the law of the country which is Islam that's a total different when you go like this on the street yeah. of Tehran they would shoot you that's not a choice I'm sorry okay, but you have it's to different. understand I know that you're coming from the Iranian context I work for example on Morocco and most people don't realize that Morocco is technically an Islamic state but the state and, and, is and, and, no, no, it's, it's and technically an Islamic together. state yes it's technically an Islamic no. state it refers to Sharia every single law has to be passed through a body of ulama to be passed and I'm sure sure many of you have enjoyed sun-spilled holidays on the beach in Morocco and never thought twice about the it. There is variation. Come here. No, you need to acknowledge it. Get me there's a new because there's a great, as usual, there's a disconnect. Um, <laughs> Islam is not what Muslims do. Absolutely. Why do we judge a religion by its practitioners? No. There are lots of mad Muslims, just there are, there are lots of mad Christians, Jews and Hindus. I don't judge Christianity on the basis of what George W. Bush did in his eight years as President of America. I don't see why Islam should be judged on the basis of what some Muslims do. And just, and just to answer your specific question, which is, is Islam misrepresented in Britain? No doubt about it, and mainly by my colleagues in the... Misunderstood. Mm. Mm. Well, it is misunderstood because, unfortunately, my colleagues in the media make sure that's the case. Mm. You, look at, you look at newspaper coverage of Islam today. There was a study done by Cardiff University. Two-thirds of stories published about Islam and Muslims between 2000 and 2008 contain the idea that Islam was a threat, backwards, dangerous, or a source of problems. Yeah. The most common adjectives used about Muslims in the press were extremist, militant, radical, fundamentalist, fanatic. It is open season on Muslims in the press. Absolutely. Journalists can now say things about Muslims that they would never dream of saying about blacks, gays, or Jews, yeah. and it is a scandal. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, that's complete nonsense. Actually, the press dance around Islam. They won't say things about Muhammad that they would say about Jesus. They won't say things about Allah that they do say about Jehovah. They dance around Islam. They won't deal with it at all. My real problem, and I think the point I want to make, my real problem is, yes, as a society and as a government, we hugely and dangerously misunderstand Islam. Why? The reason why we misunderstand it, you'll have heard, everybody knows about the preventing violence extremism. The government is pouring millions of my money and your money into this, into this project simply to stop the violent extremists. Yet there are extremists, Muslim extremists out there, who actually would make the BMP look quite reasonable people. And they're receiving money from our government. Do you accept why? Because the vast majority of Muslims are not Isn't that the key point? I think I but think the think vast think majority of Muslims wait, 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 are not wait, 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 extremists. Wait, wait. The vast majority are not extremists, and yet we don't hear from the vast majority. Exactly. We hear on the front page, perhaps you should pick up a newspaper, we hear on the front page of the Mail Express that's and the Sun, Amjum Chowdhury, who represents, what, 0.01% of Muslims? We don't hear from the majority who eschew violence, who don't... We hear a huge amount from the Muslim Council of Britain. We hear a huge amount of the East London Mosque. No, they're not violent, but they are extremists. And they're extreme. extreme. I think you're extreme. I'm a I mean, normal wisdom. Okay, I think you're extreme. Let me finish extreme. my point. Let me finish my point. Well, I think, well, I think no. we're, you're both having to back to death with each other. I don't think you'll be having lunch after the programme, the two of you. Shiva. Or maybe that would be the answer to things. The family I know in a minute, but Shiva, you want to come back. Can I just give you a point? Can you give me an example that Islam come to the power and not abusing especially women's rights and human rights? I mean, I think you're mixing up individual right to believe in Islam and Islam as a state is two different things. I'm not and against, I think you're, I I'm think not you're against individual culture, Islam. Religion. I'm saying whatever Islam comes to the power, that's what happened to people in Iran, Afghanistan and other Okay, well that's an interesting is, question. Is, let me, let me, is, let me is, kind of rephrase that question for, 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 for your views. Where in the world then is it, is it best practiced in your mind? Uh, well, I think I'd just like to clarify that obviously we're looking at um, in the Muslim world primarily post-colonial states and third world countries. And third world countries generally don't tend to have have the most open, liberal and free societies in which you are, are able to enjoy the rights that people enjoy in this society. So to apply the frame of reference that we have here, there is problematic. Now, well, I would Malaysia, say that women are higher than Malaysia, aren't they? There are many women in, in, in Parliament in Malaysia, and I think if we had some uh, Malaysian or Indonesian female activists here, they'd certainly have a thing or two to Can say. I ask here. They'd certainly have a thing or two Can to Can I ask you something about this. that, which is that uh, just last week, three... Uh, young girls between the age of 17 and 25 
were, were caned uh, for having sex with, uh, with their fiancés, actually. Is and, that, is that to are, do... Is there that are feminist Islamic uh, yeah. uh, organisations in Malaysia and Indonesia campaigning mm. against these sorts of punishments and saying that actually this is not the way go, to go about it and this is not scripturally coherent. The model of the Prophet, peace be upon him, so it, he was sent as a mercy to mankind. His model was somebody of somebody who was very kind, very soft and not somebody who yes. went around abusing people or being harsh to people. So certainly when we see this, this disparate between the way that it's practiced by Muslims and the way it's discussed by the text itself, it's clear that there is a misunderstanding. Can I, can I just ask you something? Yeah. What is the punishment for uh, having sex before marriage? What is the punishment yeah. of having sex before marriage? In this country, there's no, none. No, 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 no. We're not yeah. talking about this country. I'm sorry. We're, no, we're, talking, we're about talking about living about in a country under Islamic Islam. laws. Well, well, That's well, a different. Well, no, no, it's I very mean, different. You, you mean, you mean, you mean a stipulated... Yeah. Yeah. You mean, wait, wait. You mean, what do you mean? A stipulated in the religion, in the scriptures? No, no, no. What I mean by that... It's different. You live in this country. When the, when the Quran is the law of the country, it's different. Yeah. You, if you have sex I before marriage, they will the punish law. you. And I, I don't believe that this is this idea it's that not Quran is the law. Islam. I'm talking about Islam. We're yes. talking about Islam. No, I, I don't okay, Ra Rashi, Rashid Ali, you used to be yeah. in Hizbut Tahrir, didn't you? I mean, you, you used to be what they call a radical, you used to be what they call an extremist, and now you work advising the government. Well, I think this debate kind of shows the polarization that's involved in this. Mm. Essentializing Islam to mean one particular thing yeah. is fundamentally the problem. Exactly. If you're going to essentialize Islam to mean the version of groups like Hezbollah Tahrir or the Iranian regime, then yes, of course, everybody I think here will condemn that. Essentially, and this is part of the problem, there are many Muslims who do misunderstand Islam and who do have vacuous literal interpretations. They'll take a, a piece of scripture out of context or without looking at the under, underlining theme or the aim and they'll apply it accordingly and that is definitely problematic. What does it mean when God, God said, O oh, believers, take not the Jews or Christians as friends? Okay, it's, it's, again, you have a verse there which is revealed in a particular situation to do with a conflict period and is advising the people at the time that they should not take those particular people as Jews and friends. On the other hand, yeah. as an example, you have the other verse of the Quran, which is a normative verse. It's coming, giving a description, mm -hmm. and it's in the second chapter of the Quran, which says, Verily, those who believe, those who are Jewish, those who are Christian, those who are Sabians, those who have faith, those who do good deeds, they have nothing to fear, and there's no blame on them. And they should have is, a reward. Yeah, yeah. And this is a normative statement. It's making a declaration of the nature of relations that people should have between faiths. Yeah. So the problem really lies in people who either have a politicized view, like you said, and they want to then I impose their specific... And hijack the religion. Oh, yeah, Put whatever. And then the other point which Matty did mention is that actually sometimes you do have this. So yesterday in The Guardian, the front page of The Guardian was Tory madrasas radicalize youth. Mm. Now, obviously, we know what they're talking about, and they're not actually talking about young Tories going to Madaris, going to learn about religion. They're talking about a specific group and the radicalization that takes place. But the fact they use the phrase madrasas is, in, is indicative of a popular sentiment. <laughs> it's indicative that it people play, it see It plays to bigotry. Of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. Also, uh, yeah, I would like to no, no, out. We haven't had the other panel members. Can I, uh, I know this is a, absolutely your, your, your area, but it, can I just hear from the other panel members first? Sure. Well, Owen think... Jones, do we need to understand Islam? <laughs> Oh, this is a crazy world. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get problems with Christianity, with Judaism, with, with, with Hinduism, with Buddhism, and with Islam when you have literalistic interpretations. We cannot just apply the literalistic interpretations. Peter, an adjunctive question, if I may. But there, there are those who will argue, but if it is the word of God, is that the, is that the problem? That is the problem. But the, but, the, the no, no please, I, I, I'd like to finish. No, no, sorry, go for it. <laughs> you know, this problem of literalism runs through many world religions and has caused bloodshed and, uh, and terrible things throughout history. Throughout history, we also have to understand that there are many different Islams, as there are many different Christianities, as there are many different. <laughs> so, you know, let, let's just get real about that. But the press is obsessed with the bad one. Yeah, but we know that. Come on, the game's up. We, we in this room, we know, <laughs> we know the agenda of the press. We can read what they say. And very lastly, you know, theocracies throughout history. Religious governments, including Oliver Cromwell's government here in this country, are complete oppressive disasters. And we need to understand that and get, 
I'll go with that. I know the lady on my left disagrees. No, and no. religion, religion no, isn't. I don't it, disagree with you what know, you just Islam said. and Christianity. This isn't something that someone has the answer to somewhere. This is a constantly evolving process. The, the paint hasn't set here. So each generation is able to put its understanding... The problem is, though, that Beverly, and you've, you've got a degree in theology, haven't mm. you? The mm. problem is, if you say that's the last word, this is what yeah. pe people argue, if you say mm. that is it, that's what God said, that's the last word, uh, because there's a, there's a huge, uh, you know, within Islam, we have to acknowledge, there are huge mo there's a modernising movement, there's a reformist movement, mm -hmm. and there are massive debates going on at the moment, but there are a lot of people who think, that's it, that's the final word, that's, that's what he said. But even I modernists work, believe that. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I, I grew up in a household which was um, charismatic Christian, Pentecostal. So the word of God um, was, as far as, as, as the Bible was concerned, it was literal, from God's mouth. Now you had members of my extended family who took that, as far as I was concerned, to the nth degree <laughs> and would... Um, you know, have rows whether women should wear trousers, is that scriptural or not, or, you know, whether women should, should have their hair in braids because, um, you know, that's st stupid things that to me are trivial. But that just goes to highlight that in every single religion, particularly monotheistic religion, you are going to have different denominations who will interpret things differently. I've got, I, I grew up in Wolverhampton, everybody knows that. I, I'm, I'm, I've got mates who, you know, just everyday Mohammeds, shall we call them, who um, the, the name tells you that they're, they're, they were born into a, in, into a Muslim family, but they go down the pub and they, they you know, they, they just like, like anybody else in, in, in Britain. And, and then you've got people like the Algem Trowdrys who are, who are, as far as I'm concerned, monsters. There is a chasm between my mate Mohammed, who I went to school with, and Anjum Taudi. And, and yet, both of them are classed as exactly the same thing in this country at this point. Why? Because the media has ensured that my mate Mohammed and Andrew and Chowdhury yeah. are one and the same thing, when clearly and they're not. Thinking. Clearly they're not. Julie, how do, you, how do we get away from the lazy thinking? And to excuse the media, and to excuse the press, 9-11, 7-7, all the many people who call themselves Muslims and perhaps wrongly interpreted the text have, uh, you know, plotted to murder people. So you can understand why there is a PR problem, can't you, Julie? I think we can, but I think, you know, there's, there's nothing else like it. I mean, our, our friend over here, who was talking about Which how... Friend? The, the, over here on the front row here, there was talking about, yeah, <laughs> who was talking about, um, you know, how Jesus and Jehovah... I mean, I can't remember the last time any of these things were mentioned in the newspaper, but constantly, daily, my whole life, effectively... Well, recently Elton woman, John, I gave an interview, Elton John said he thought that Jesus was gay. Now, if that, if he had said that exactly. about... I, I, I hesitate to say it, I don't want to offend people, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm thinking, what would the reaction have been? Of course, and to be honest, the reaction from some would have been completely unacceptable and over the top. What we're saying here is actually is brilliant. I love the fact that Islam has a range of opinions and you can have a discussion. I love the fact that we have a panel, there's many, many people who have different views, etc. But I think people just don't realise when they say that Islam is skirted around and that Muslims are not treated badly in the press. I don't think people actually realise what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis for us to once again see things out in the open in a way that's just unacceptable and not, would not be acceptable of any why, other group of that, people. That, that, that's why it's really... Sorry, sorry yeah, Alan, we're, not, we're not talking about Iran, we're yeah. talking about yeah. this country. We're talking about this country. What happened to you in Iran was to do with the regime. Shiva, can I ask you a question? It was to do with the regime. It was to do with the misogyny in Iran. It was to do with the culture in Iran. So how come before that it wasn't like that? How come before that? How come as soon as Islam... Because people are misinterpreting Islam, no, religion. No, it's not. And they weren't the Islam, Islam. When the Islam... Uh, one, one second. When you, see, when you hear about Islam a lot in media, just because of the political Islam, just because of the movement in general. How come you haven't heard about it 30 years ago, for instance? Because nowadays, it's not individual anymore. It's political Islam. That's why it issues fatwa. And you saying the regime, before that, just mention to what you said, in Morocco, it's not state and the religion together. In Morocco, in the time before the revolution in Iran, they were considered themselves as a Muslim, but the state and the religion weren't together. Nowadays, the regime is under power, and they impose Quran. They impose Islamic laws. Why didn't we hear about this 30 years ago? Because 30 years ago, we had another bogeyman. They were called communists. No. Communists went no, away, no, no. now we have 
Muslims. <laughs> 80 years ago it was the Jews, then it was the blacks, then no, it was the uh, Irish. No, I'll tell you There's why. always a community that's de demonizing Britain, oh. sadly. No, I'll tell you why. Unfortunately. Yeah, Russian, 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 Russian. Uh, there, there is another distinction which is the fact that, you know, looking at Khomeini, Khomeini was heavily influenced by Maududi. One of the things that Maududi writes in his, Maududi's son writes in his biography is the correspondence between the two. The Ayatollah. Now, this was yeah. the Ayatollah Khomeini and Sayyid Maududi. Let's not now, go too far back into history Islamist. with a minute in the debate left to it. So, yeah. you had <laughs> radical Islamists, and this was a movement that then took power in Iran. She had, A, a very radical interpretation that decided to become politicized and impose itself over the people, which is why you didn't have it 30 years I ago. But Islam has been provision. in Iran for Be centuries. Because we, so we it is it's to do with a, politi a very, very extreme politicized interpretation of Islam, which is enforced over the society. And that, I think, is okay. where the problem uh, lies. Uh, Miriam, last word. Yeah, no, last the, word, the Miriam. Uh, uh, have we understood things better, do you think? <clears> well, after, the, after yeah. this debate, yeah. oh, I'll leave that for the public to judge. But I would like to point out that these misconceptions have very real impact on people's lives. Lives. And this is the point, is that there was a report recently between a, a former anti-terrorism officer and uh, the Exeter University looking at the way in which media reports and nationalist reports have had an impact on the motivations for assailants on Muslims. So uh, clearly there is a link between the negative portrayals, the misconceptions that then turn into prejudice and outright discrimination, and the fact that Muslims are seeing a rise in attacks on them. Islamophobia essentially is on the rise. Uh, so that, you know, this isn't something that we can sweep under the carpet. These misconceptions think, have a real impact on our lives, our community. Do you feel angry that some of your fellow Muslims have kind of been to blame on this? Do I feel angry? Uh, I, feel, I feel very disappointed and very uh, devastated that uh, the faith is so misrepresented in the public faith and that the voice is given primarily to these people. I do think that there is this issue. Um, and, uh, you know, you sort of confirm the point yourself when you bring up uh, decontextualized quote, quotes from the Quran. None of us <laughs> refer to the Quran looking at one section out of context. Mm. And just because but other people do, that's the problem. Well, but yes, but most people so don't. And just because well, they do people, in Saudi Arabia, and just because they do in Iran, and they, they do right across the Middle East. Sorry, and, and just because you believe yeah, something... Yeah. Wait, 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 Sorry. last word, Miriam. And just because you believe something is the word of God does not mean that you take it literally. Now, okay. that is a key point that needs we to be have deleted. To leave it there, Kathy. No, no. You, yeah, you can join in the debate by, by logging on to bbc.co.uk <laughs> forward slash the big questions. I imagine some people will. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can follow the link to our message board and send us your thoughts about our last debate. Should voting be compulsory? And uh, you can find details uh, on our webpage of how to be in our audience. We're in Newcastle uh, next week, Edinburgh on March 21st. Then after a two-week Easter break, we'll be back uh, from London on April the 11th.